Live from Waterford and Ungarvan, this is Waterford at One. Good afternoon, I'm Sinead Her In today's top stories, routine testings detected three positive cases among nursing home staff in Waterford. Further COVID-19 restrictions are set to be announced tonight. Weather warnings for heavy rain and strong winds have been issued for Waterford. And in sports speculation mounts as to whether the inter-county championships will be played. <laughs> The managing director of a Waterford City nursing home says they're devastated to have two positive cases of COVID-19 among their staff. Three staff members, two at Havenwood and one in Calorbridge Nursing Home, were diagnosed on Friday night after routine serial testing. All the required measures are in place at both facilities. Havenwood Managing Director is Porg Dolan. He spoke to Damien Tiernan on Daisha today and says six members of staff are close contacts and that they're also waiting on results for several residents. Ten residents don't, would have been close contact. They were tested over Saturday. Six tests have come back not detected, which is great news, and we're just waiting for four more to come through. This is why serial testing is done, that we can react very, very quickly, and uh, we get our residents tested. So as I say, the good news is that six of our residents who are close contacts have not, not detected, and we're just waiting for four results. And I suppose we think it's a risk is, is low, he says it's early stages yet. We hope that we have a contained just with the two members of staff um, and the residents aren't affected, but we are, we're in early stages yet. And, and uh, as I say to you, we're, just, we're, we're reacting to what we need to do and being proactive as well in relation to isolation and complete lockdown of the home again. Five new cases of COVID-19 were announced for Waterford last night. It's the lowest figure in a week. 153 cases have been confirmed in Waterford in the past fortnight, 101 over the last seven days. Waterford's 14-day incidence rate is now 131.7 per 100,000 people. Every county in Ireland now has incidence rates above 100. Waterford's is the third lowest. Senior ministers are meeting with health officials at the moment to finalise the details of new restrictions for the country. It's expected a level four plus system will be placed on the entire country. Here's our political correspondent, Sean Defoe. Morning, Minister. Morning, Minister. Morning, Minister. Morning, folks. How are you? Be a real exit Good to see you. Today, health Minister Stephen Donnelly not giving anything away as he arrived at government buildings earlier. His colleague Eamon Ryan has defended how long it's taken to make a decision. It's getting things right and, and uh, this is complicated. There's a huge amount of implications for people's everyday lives. Travel limits, non-essential retail closing and bars and restaurants moving to takeaway only are some of the measures expected from tonight's announcement. The Cabinet subcommittee headed by the leaders of the three coalition parties is meeting at the moment to hammer out the final details of a plan that will take elements of Level 4 and Level 5. A big focus has been keeping the schools open in all eventualities, but many services like gyms, swimming pools and possibly hairdressers and barbers are also set to close. The recommendation is likely to be for three or four weeks. Measures are being discussed about how to help people who live alone or need care, including the idea of social bubbles that would allow them to be visited. The question of enforcement is a key one today, with a new system of fines likely to be discussed, but not yet finalised. The full Cabinet meets at four o'clock to sign off on the plans, with a formal announcement late this evening. Fears that all non-essential retailers will be forced to close led to large queues outside a Waterford toy store this morning. These people were in the queue outside Smith's and spoke to WLR News. It's totally panic buying, but at the same time, I'd rather have something for the day than not have nothing at all, and that's why I'm here today. Um, it's just, it, it's going to be a tough Christmas on the kids, it's going to be a tough Christmas on everyone, but it's just so that we will have something. I have uh, a very vulnerable child at home, and um, he needs to be sorted, and, and it's just to get in ahead. I went online about a half an hour ago and just click. The thing said, come in in five minutes and it's ready and it's fantastic. Businesses in Waterford and across the country are nervous about the days ahead. Kerry Bedell closed her florist, Bridget Ballot Flowers in Dungarvan, just before Mother's Day in March. I just closed the doors and, and left and had to come back in a week later and basically just everything into black sacks and to compost. It was awful, awful for me because I, lo- I love my little shop and I, I love being around the flowers and I missed them over lockdown. I missed being around the flowers. Um, so I am just a little bit nervous about what's going to happen in the next couple of days and hopefully I, not to be in that position again. She says she will reopen if she has to close again. The one thing I've learned, though, is that I can come back. You know, I came back the last time and I'll come back again. And it's that kind of fight and spirit <laughs> that will probably keep us all going, I think this year. Uh, Everybody's struggling. You know, it's a difficult time, strange times indeed. 
The sister of Jojo Dullard says she knows in her heart that she's dead. A murder investigation has been launched into the disappearance of the Kilkenny woman who vanished 25 years ago. Stephanie Rowan reports from Kildare. On the 9th of November 1995, 21-year-old Jojo Dullard was trying to make her way home from Dublin to Callan in County Kilkenny. The only bus available was to Nace in County Kildare. So she went there and then hitched her way to Moon. It was there that she phoned a friend from a phone box before telling them a car had stopped for her. She hasn't been seen or heard from since. Now, 25 years later, Gardaí have classified her disappearance as murder. Detective Superintendent Des McTiernan from the Serious Crime Review Team says this isn't down to one crucial piece of evidence, but more because they've ruled out other possibilities. Jojo had plans for the future. She was starting a new job in Callan uh, the following week. She, she was excited about life. She enjoyed life. She was like any young lady at that moment in time. She had plans. Jojo's sister, Kathleen Bergen, says she wants to bring her home to Kilkenny and lay her to rest. When Jojo was on her way home that night. Her journey was cut short. She did not deserve what happened to her on that night. You can help Jojo finish that journey and bring her home to us and lay her to rest beside mum and dad. Nobody has ever been arrested as part of Jojo's disappearance. Her family is now hoping for some answers after all these years. Stephanie Rowan in Kildare. One of the most important advisers in U.S. politics has appealed directly to U.S. Republicans abroad to put aside party allegiance and help vote Trump out. Olivia Troy worked for the vice president of the U.S. as Homeland Security and Counterterrorism Advisor. She also served as an aide to the White House Coronavirus, Coronavirus Task Force, only leaving in August. Olivia Troy spoke to WLR's Damien Tiernan and had this to say to Americans in Ireland. When you're voting in this election, you have to think about the fact that you're really voting for your own well-being in life and for the people who are living in the United States still, for your friends and family who are here domestically. And I think this is a moment like no other. And it's important to take a step back and say it's country over party right now. Heavy rain and strong winds are forecast for Waterford over the next two days. Two status yellow warnings have been issued by Met Erin. Up to 50 millimetres of rain is expected between now and tomorrow afternoon. The forecaster says it'll become very windy tomorrow morning with gusts of up to 100 kilometres an hour. There'll be an elevated risk of coastal flooding due to the exceptionally high tides combined with the strong offshore winds. Meanwhile, bad weather is hampering the search for fungi who was reported missing six days ago. Mallow Search and Rescue used sonar to scanned the seabed yesterday and also sent divers down. The bottlenose dolphin, who's lived in Dingle Harbour for 37 years, hasn't been seen in six days. It's the longest he's ever been missing. Sean Mackin, he is a video journalist with RTE and TG Cahar. He's at that age, I suppose, where, where he is pushing on, and that is certainly a concern. Now, some of the local fishermen here were talking about an easterly wind which has been blowing for the last week, and that tends to drive sprat and feed out to sea, and that there is a possibility that maybe fungi has followed the feed out but the fungi boatmen who've been in and out him for decades say this is highly 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 unusual he's never been missing for this length of time Sports News on WLR With Virgin Media Waterford Want super fast broadband today? Drop into Virgin Media Georgia Street and take it home with you Easy as that A very good afternoon from the sports desk I'm Nigel Kelly We'll start with Gaelic Games where as we sit and wait for the announcement from government this evening the GA is one of the points which many people will want an answer to The issue of inter-county games is a big one with the country waiting for so long for games to return The men's leagues returned last weekend while the first round of the Camogie Championships was also played Former Watford dual star Shane Ahern says there's a difference between inter-county and club games when it comes to COVID. There's two ways of coming at it, you know, and my jury is out a bit on it at the moment. Um, I think the GA oh, yesterday, you know, Saturday and Sunday did prove that they can run these games kind of fairly COVID uh, properly like in that. But, um, you know, I, I think previous the previous few weeks didn't help the GA's cause. I thought it was a PR disaster and I thought... It went on for three or four weeks where, uh, you know, people were seen running on the pitches, people were seen celebrating and what have you. And it should have been stopped the first time it was seen. It should have been stopped. Staying with Gaelic Games and the Waterford Camogie team fell at the first hurdle when they were beaten 15 points to 8 by Kilkenny in the first round of the Senior Camogie Championship. The data manager, Fergal O'Brien, says that not taking the chances they were given had a big part in the result. At this level, when you don't take your chances, you know, we had a number of, I suppose, goal opportunities that hunt in the first half. We didn't take them. 
Um, and we went in level at the break when I when I thought, you know, we should have been at least two or three points up. Um, and, yeah, unfortunately, look, that, that's the way it goes. We didn't take the chances. And then in the second half, then we, we, I thought, you know, not for want of effort, but things just didn't work out the way we wanted. The next game up is Limerick this Sunday in what has become a must-win game for Fergal O'Brien's side. Moving to soccer where the Republic of Ireland step up their preparations ahead of Friday's European qualifier against Ukraine. Vera Pau's side are, are, are in Germany to train before they travel to Kiev for a game that could secure a playoff place. Ukraine beat Greece 4-0 in their last game, so the Ireland boss is expecting a different game from last year's one in Dublin, which Ireland won 3-2. I learned about Ukraine that they underestimated us. I think that they were overwhelmed about our structure and and the way that we were approaching them um if i see how they played against uh, greece which is the latest game um and their perseverance um to get as many goals as they could and the way that they did it um it's more that i've learned from that last game than our first game Go to the Premier League now, where former Liverpool defender Stephen Warnock says that Virgil van Dijk's absence is a huge loss for the club. The Netherlands centre-back will need knee surgery uh, following a bad tackle from Everton goalkeeper Jordan Pickford in Saturday's 2 all Premier League draw. Warnock has told Sky Sports News it's time for Joe Gomez and Joel Matip to step up. They are capable, but they have one common denominator between them, is that they've played alongside van Dijk, who makes everyone a better player. They have to now f- forge a relationship that is better than what we saw at the weekend. Leeds can go third in the Premier League this evening with a win at home to Wolves. Kick-off at Ellen Road is at 8 o'clock, but before that, at half-past five, West Brom and Burnley both have a chance to pick up a first league win of the season. While at home in the League of Ireland, there's one game this evening where Derry City take on Dundalk from a quarter to six. And in horse racing, there's a seven-race card at Gorham Park, where the first race goes to post at five-past two. Sports news on WLR is thanks to Virgin Media Waterford. WLR asks you to keep Waterford safe by reducing your social contacts.